Cedar Springs Public Schools' vision statement says that we aspire to be a place that enriches the world by cultivating learners who thrive within their communities. The stories that will be shared through this series certainly demonstrate how that vision comes to fruition. Hi, my name is Brian Breck. I'm the art manager and a senior producer for Epic Games, and I'm a Cedar Springs High School graduate, class of 1984. I don't think I realized or took advantage of the potential that high school and Cedar Springs High School specifically offered me at, at, at that time. I, I, I wish, looking back, I wish there were things that I had done. I wish I had been more involved so my journey started with the intention of going to the University of Detroit to be an architect. Um, I will quickly say that I failed miserably at that attempt. My life is nothing like what I thought it was going to be. And that's awesome. So really what ended up happening was I decided to um, finally admit that what I really wanted to do and what I didn't think I was a small town kid could do was work in the motion picture business. My intent was to go to college in Chicago and, and just simply due to money, that didn't happen right away. So my thought was I would get a job, I would earn some money, and then I'd eventually roll into Columbia University. But what ended up happening instead was I got a job at a duplication firm, which is literally the last link in the chain in what happens when you make a motion picture or a commercial. And my job was to put labels on VHS tapes 10 hours a day. So I would stand there and literally just label VHS tapes all day long. But what that started giving me was insight as to, well, what was the step before me? How, how, did, how did these commercials, how did these, these films get onto a piece of VHS tape? So I started talking to them and then it became, well, how did, how did we get the commercial to duplicate to begin with? Well, that came from a post-production house. So how do I talk to those people? And, and the long story short is that I basically just kept learning the step that was next up in the ladder. And not just learning what the step was, but how the step functioned. So that eventually got me into, into the post-production house. And then I just repeated the process. It was the, well, who created these pieces of, of, of film? Who, who made the things that were going on these tapes? And those were the editors. And that was a moment where I, I really knew I was on the right track. Um, in college, uh, at Grand Valley again, um, there were those moments where we'd have to make student films. And it was the editing process, the putting together of, of the, the, the select shots that I really started to enjoy. And then when I finally met the editors and really saw what they did, I just, I just fell in love with it. So I became an assistant editor. And I look at it and I, I, um, I'm, I'm very self-critical and I tend to think I have not accomplished very much. Having said that, I think I've worked a total of I think it's about 13, maybe 15 films that I've actually worked on. I had a conversation with my mother once when, it, when I was living in California and I was producing on a, a motion picture. She at the time asked me, she goes, I really don't understand what you do. What is your job? And I was giving her descriptions of, well, I do this during the day and I, this is how I talk to people. And, and it was very clear that I was not getting through to her and I, I was not explaining myself very well. And I said, mom, do you know what I used to do when I was a drum major? Oh yeah, you know, you, you made sure the team, the, the, the band was in a certain place and you organized this and organized that and, and then whatever. And I'm like, I said, mom, I'm a drum major. I made a career out of being a drum major. And all of a sudden, she got it. I was born in 1966. Star Wars came out when I was 11 years old, 1977. And I was a creature of Star Wars. I was that kid who saw Star Wars and, and it changed my life. It, changed, it, it just became who I am today, for, for that matter. And so I was always fascinated by visual effects and specifically, was always fascinated with George Lucas's company, Industrial Light and Magic. You know, you know, growing up, there there was no other company. They were the leader, and I would say contend that they are still one of the leaders today. That company fascinated me in terms of what they could do. And at some point, I made the decision that I was going to apply for a job at Industrial Light and Magic. 
pretty much assuming that that would never happen. I had to at least try. I had to at least give it a shot. And I did. And I, I, didn't, I didn't get the job. I, I found an entry level job that I applied for and I didn't get it. So I applied again. And I didn't get that job either. And I applied third time. And I didn't get that job either. <laughs> I have seven or eight rejection letters from Industrial Light and Magic. But lo and behold, on the eighth time, I, thought I got a phone call one day. So I spent seven years at ILM. I then moved on to a company called ESC Entertainment or Escape Entertainment. And they were the, the company doing the visual effects on the Matrix films. So I was, that was my first hands-on production job. But I ended up getting a phone call from an amazing, amazing, talented man named Kim Libreri, who was now the CTO at, at Epic Games. And Kim was who I worked for and worked with on the Matrix films and on Catwoman. Um, Kim was a visual effects supervisor and one of the partners in the company at the time. Kim called me up and said, hey, we need somebody who does what you do. Epic is growing. And we want you to come out to North Carolina. And the things that Epic is doing as a company it's cutting edge video game, virtual production. It, it's just an amazing company. Um, the work they do with their game engine, the Unreal Engine is, is, is fascinating. And to be able to be a part of that and a part of that team is again, probably one of the most funnest, coolest, wackiest experiences I've ever had in my career. And if I could go back and tell myself anything, it would be relax, be yourself. This is not that hard. In a lot of ways, I think high school kids today have it way harder. So it's easy to say, you know, dude, you should have, you should relax. You should, you should take it easy. It'd be hard to, it, it would be hard to tell that to a current high schooler, but at the same time, I think there's something to it. I think if you can remove some of that pressure, I think if you can remove some of that anxiety and the, and, and the things that happen, who you are today is not who you're going to be in the future. Have more fun. I wish I would have told myself to have more fun. Get involved with more things. I mean, I could say I had fun, but I think had I been willing to ask more questions and willing to just get out of my comfort zone, I, and there was no way that was happening. I'm telling you, like that was not me as a kid. That was the, you know, I was in this very tight little bubble of who I thought I was and what I thought I could or couldn't do. And, you know, again, thank God for things like marching band and concert band and, and, and given the opportunity to be a drum major, that helped push me out of that comfort zone a little bit. You know, a lot of this is gonna sound really trite and a lot of this is gonna sound just like what everybody else always tells you. Um, doesn't mean it's not true. It doesn't mean that there's not truth behind some of these very, I would say, simplistic statements. Do what makes you happy. Again, I, I am aware of how silly that sounds. We all have to make a living. We all have to earn money. We all have families to support or will have families to support. But if you're doing something that makes you miserable, no matter how much money you make, you're not giving yourself the life you're entitled to. There's a balance in there somewhere between doing the things that you wanna do and doing the things that you love. It's not about you. Certainly you're part of the equation, but if you can come into an experience, a job, a hobby, a, a whatever, and bring your enjoyment to it, that's great. But if along with whatever makes you happy and brings you joy, you are also elevating others, you are also helping other people feel good about themselves, about you, about the experience, that pays dividends later. There's you being happy and then there's you being happy because you and everyone around you is also happy. And we don't do that. We're a very self-centered society. We, we, we think about us and what we show to the world on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok and all this other stuff. It's not about that. It's about you and the people around you. So do what makes you happy. Find balance in your life and elevate others around you. And no matter what that variable or how that equation fits together for you personally, your life's gonna be pretty amazing if you can do that. So live your life and enjoy your life.